Everybody, it's Steph with uh, KillerSites.com. All right, in this video, I want to talk about creating apps, creating web apps. Uh, it's a short little video. I was having a conversation with a friend of mine who works for a very large software manufacturer. And the uh, subject of uh, mobile app creation came up. Now, this company has tons of mobile apps. Well, tons, I don't know two dozen, something like that, quite a bit. And so the question I asked is, you know, what is the breakdown, the percentage between using HTML5 based mobile apps, where you just basically create a responsive website, you know, lots of CSS, JavaScript, and away you go, versus a native app writing, you know, if you're writing for iOS, you use Swift or Objective-C, or if you're writing for Android, you use uh, Java. So you know, I, I figured it was probably 80-20, 80% web HTML5 and 20% iOS uh, or native rather. So uh, I wonder what you think. Now, before I get into the answer, I was actually quite surprised at what the, uh, the percentage really is. Now, you got to understand, this is a, a very big, very big company, very well established. So I was kind of surprised by the answer. So the answer is... It was 99% HTML5, 99%. And the reason it is is because for the types of apps that they do, which are business-oriented apps, HTML5 did a great job, and going native was not required. So let me expand upon that. First of all, if you want to take your HTML5-based uh, apps and have them work and have full access to the hardware, the underlying hardware of your mobile devices so that you can access the gyro meter and stuff like that. You have to use, well, you have to use an intermediary framework. So there's, uh, the one I know of is something called Cordova, which is free, you can use it. And basically, you know, you can just drop your uh, HTML5 app in there and you can do API calls right to your underlying device. Now, of course, this is never going to be as good as mobile. If you want that really super fast, responsive uh, type of app, if you want really, really slick custom graphics, you're going to have to go uh, native. That's uh, Swift, uh, Objective-C for iOS, and that's Java for Android. But the fact of the matter is, for most apps out there, you don't, you know, you probably won't see that big of a difference and that's what they say now you know, to be honest with you i have not used uh cordova or any of these frameworks i looked at them but i haven't used them so i don't really have any comments from personal experience but from this company which is a huge company um the fact that they use html5 inside of cordova 99 percent of the times uh, should tell you something about how effective uh, this is you know so you know, I've been talking about in a couple of videos how, you know, writing uh, apps for iOS or writing apps for Android was not going to be necessarily the best choice in terms of, uh, of a programming environment to learn. Now, I'm a big advocate of learning web technologies. That's uh, HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, and, you know, for back end, um, I'm a big proponent of uh, PHP, although... I can see some circumstances where you might want to go JavaScript where perhaps Node will come into play. Although, again, uh, I have yet to explore that, so I don't want to, you know, pass judgment. But, that, but that's the future, by the way. It's probably JavaScript and uh, PHP going forward. But anyway, so that's just a curious little piece of information. M again, major software company, one of the biggest in the top 10 in the world. 99% of their apps are actually HTML5 stuck inside of the Cordova wrapper so that they don't have to write for Android and then, then they don't have to port and write for iOS. It's uh, the only times that they do that, the only times that they write native is A, when they have an app that is really just specifically designed for a particular uh, device. So if they're writing just for iPhone, then they'll, you know, then they'll go uh, native or if they're writing just for Android, they'll, they'll go native again. And maybe in the situation where they really need some super fancy 
user interface that would be hard to do with HTML5 and the other web technologies. That's HTML5, CSS3, and JavaScript, of course. And uh, there you go.